Hey guys, it's Matt with Southern Energy. We're out here today looking at some townhomes and we want to share our top five air sealing tips for party walls. What's up guys? We're going to talk about some of the uh, critical details in party wall air sealing. We're in a townhome today um, and we want to get this townhome a little bit tighter to pass hero code. So the top five things that we're going to look at are, let's start with the corner back here. Uh, we need to have a drywall spacer because the way these walls are built, there's a gap uh, in the construction and that allow, allows a significant amount of air leakage to enter the building. So having uh, an extension of your, your core wall, this drywall spacer right here, fills that gap. Now what's important is that it's air sealed in. So in this case, we can see that one side is air sealed right here, whereas we missed the, the other corner. So what happens is we've left a small gap and from the slab up to the attic, across the ceiling and back down the other side of the building, uh, that gap could be several hundred feet. Uh, a 16 inch gap, a 16th of an inch gap over several hundred feet can add up to a pretty large opening. So we wanna make sure that we seal this. This is gonna be on both ends of the building and it's gonna go from the slab all the way to the attic. So we wanna make sure that gap is closed. What we don't wanna forget is the band joist detail. Now that's, that's closed up here. We can't really see what they did. So we're gonna to have to have some faith that it was well sealed. But there's the same gap extends in that band joist space. And the reason that I mentioned that specially is because that is generally covered up and it's often overlooked, maybe more often than this vertical gap right here. So what we wanna do is make sure that we've got a complete air seal all the way from the slab up to the attic of the building. Uh, when we're looking at this exterior wall interface of the party wall. The next detail that we want to look at is the spacer along the top plate of the wall. We want to make sure that we're stopping air leakage coming down from the attic behind the top plates. And this is another example where they've done a good job. They've put the drywall spacer in there, they filled that gap, but they failed to air seal it completely. So in this example, we can see that they, they ran a bead of foam along the back but they left a crack here between the wood and the spacer. And what that means is that we've got a 50% air seal in this example. We really need to focus on getting both sides so that we can stop that air from coming down through the wall, through the core wall, uh, into the house. That's how we're gonna slow that air leakage down. Now, this is a two-story unit, so we would have done that on the top. Some redundancy is okay when we're talking about air sealing. Now, another example would be these spacers. Every eight feet, fire code is gonna make you put these spacers in there, uh, but they also serve some purpose for compartmentalization of air leakage. And what that means is that when the air seal is damaged or imperfect in one area, it can't affect the whole wall as easily. So what we wanna do is air seal both sides of this gap as well, just like the top plate spacer. Because what's gonna happen is we have an air seal every eight feet. So if we have a problem here, it's contained to this eight foot section rather than running the whole length of this party wall, which is about 40 feet long. Uh, so there are several layers of air sealing here, including some redundant layers to make sure that we consistently achieve our goals when it comes time for that blower door test at final. All right, guys, here we are on the second floor of the same townhouse. Um, and what we're seeing is, uh, is some inconsistency in the air sealing. This is one example here. Um, of where uh, the, the, the top plate spacer was knocked out. So we have a pretty big gap there for air leakage. Um, and what we want to do is we want to seal those things up. But we've kind of covered the, uh, the spacers. So what we want to talk about is the top plate gasket now. So you've got air leakage on the back side of the wall, but what about the front side right here? Well, what we need to do is make sure that we have a air sealing strategy at the wall top to drywall interface. Uh, there's several ways to do this. You can use a sill seal type gasket. Uh, you can use one of the newer foam type gaskets, a liquid applied foam um, that's actually a gasket material. You can also use caulk, uh, but the oversight is gonna be a lot lower there. But what we wanna do is make sure that all of our walls, 100% of our walls below the attic have a top plate sealing strategy. Because just like the, the gaps in the shaft wall, if we have a 16th or an eighth or three sixteenths of a gap across this 40 foot wall, we've got a pretty big opening. So we have a significant potential for air leakage. So in this case, we wanna make sure the top plates are sealed. Uh, this bedroom also happens to be a tray ceiling. Um, so what's important is that we get these perimeter walls. Air sealing this tray is not gonna have as much value uh, as air sealing the actual wall tops because it's not gonna leak down into the actual wall systems. The other detail that we wanna get to keep as much air out of the living space as we can 
is to make sure that we seal our bottom plates. On the first floor, it was done with a seal seal product on the concrete. Up here, they've run a bead of foam. Uh, all right, I hope these five tips will help you get a tighter townhome. Remember, we need to make sure that we're sealing our vertical edges of that party wall. Don't forget about your fan joist because that's a major weak area. We're gonna seal the top plates behind the drywall to make sure that we've got a good air seal at the top and bottom of that wall. We're gonna compartmentalize with vertical spacers and horizontal spacers. And then we're gonna make sure that we seal the drywall itself to the framing to get a good seal at the top and bottom plates. I hope these tips helped. Remember, redundancy is okay in air sealing. Use lots of caulk and foam, and we'll get them tighter. If you can't handle it, give us a call, and maybe we can help you out with some air sealing service. Thanks.